All right, well, we're here to welcome everybody to episode one of the College Cannabis Podcast. It's November 12th, 2017, and in this episode, we're going to be letting our audience know a little bit about who we are, how this podcast came to be, and what we've been up to this semester, and our future plans for next semester, and on and on. Well, this podcast is supposed to be about our acad- how we're incorporating cannabis into our academic experience. And at this time, our schedule is to release one episode per month. This is the November episode. So uh, happy Veterans Day. Happy Thanksgiving. We want you guys to have happy holidays and all that stuff. Uh, we are students here in Las Vegas. We attend UNLV. And this semester... Uh, Fall 2017, we started the UNLV Rebels Cannabis Awareness Network, becoming the first RSO, Registered Student Organization, focused on cannabis since legalization took place in our state earlier this year. Okay, Uh, we believe that in the near future, nearly every degree in every field of study will be applicable to the cannabis industry. That's why we strive to incorporate cannabis themes and topics into our projects and assignments show students how they can connect to the industry right now through things like lab tours and educational workshops like the Bud Tender Fight Club. Uh, we are currently the only college cannabis podcast in the world, but we challenge our audience to introduce us to other college cannabis podcast shows already in production. If you guys have heard of something, if our audience, our listening audience has heard of a podcast, uh, made by college students that's about cannabis we need to know about it so please take the time to uh you know leave a comment and let us know about this podcast this college cannabis podcast because we believe that we're the only one in the world at this time okay um now the format of the show is kind of loosely scripted we got a few bullet points about some of the stuff that we've been up to uh it's relaxed and loosely scripted Although we do hope to eventually transition the show into a spinoff of a more professional version with KUNV Radio on our campus at UNLV. So hopefully in the future we'll be able to take a more professional version of the show and spin it off to, uh, that will be on XM Radio to start with, but our goal would be to get it on FN eventually. Um, so today we're about to meet the cast. So basically, every episode, depending on the member, okay, we have a student organization called UNLV Rebels Can, as I said, and um, the, those members are going to be the hosts of the podcast. And it could rotate depending on people's availability or depending on who's involved or more active that particular month. We're going to want to, them to come on the show and, and report what they've been up to. So today we're going to meet today's hosts. These are some. These are the founders of the UNLV Yay. Rebels Can. <laughs> founders of UNLV Rebels Can. And uh, they're going to be telling you a little bit about themselves. I'll, I'll start it off. Um, my name is Duval. I am with the UNLV Rebel Scan. I'm a uh, journalism and media studies major. I'm studying to get my master's degree. I'm the executive director of UNLV Rebel Scan. Uh, my favorite part of the industry is public relations and marketing. Um, I like public relations because I like crafting the narrative. I like coming up with original content. You know, I like promoting uh, activities that destigmatize cannabis. You know, what I do in my life, I'm a long distance runner, and uh, with my media and journalism skills, I have like a YouTube channel, I have another podcast called the Puff and Run Podcast, and, um, and so that's why I like to kind of do PR kind of stuff, you know? So that's a little bit about me. We got three other hosts today, and here we go. Let's do it, guys. So. I'll go ahead and go first. My name is Jamie. My major is marketing and I joined Rebels Can just so that I could raise more awareness in the cannabis industry. I feel like it's something that's overshadowed and uh, my favorite part of the cannabis industry is also the marketing part of it. Just being able to create advertisements out of something so different and unique. So yeah, that's why I'm here. <laughs> nice. Well, I'll go second. Hey guys, I'm Heather. Um, my major is social work. Why I joined Rebels Can is because I'm an active patient um, myself, and I firmly believe cannabis saved my life. So, 
furthering that, I want to raise awareness, destigmatize, and also um, career-wise, kind of integrate that into my degree through um, therapy assisted with cannabis somewhere down the line. So that's why I'm here, guys. Nice. Hi, my name is Arafat Hussain, and I joined Rebels Can for numerous reasons, and one of the main reasons is because to uh, make people aware about cannabis, to make people alert, and make people realize that what is the lifestyle of cannabis is, and teaching the rights and the wrongs of cannabis because there could be the downsides and the upsides, and we have to like learn from the mistakes and progress from those, and from that it could be. It's like, you know, uh, weed is like a thing that we you can use as like a vegetable. Like it grows from a flower. It's a flower as well, and you use it. And if you use it every day, then you realize what it comes with. And it, it's just like anything. Like if you eat bananas, it's bad for your kidneys. If you eat uh, promegons, it's good for your uh, heart. So there's always good benefits and there's downfalls from everything you you get from a flower. So why judge a cannab uh, you know cannabis in general? And another thing is uh, my major is journalism. So that's another thing. So I'm in an honor society, and plus I'm I'm in the internship with uh, Freedom Leaf. So. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna graduate very soon, but knock on wood, <laughs> hey. I'm gonna keep on I'm gonna keep on striving, and be humble and just keep on striving. That's what I'm I'm about to do. That's what's up, man. So right now we're gonna give a little roll call shout out to some of our other key players. Um, these uh, these uh, next three are inter interim officers that help get the organization started, and uh, we want to give them a shout out, Jesse from over at Inyo and Ali from over at The Source. Uh, they work at those dispensaries. I know they started off as bud tenders. I'm not sure their positions now, but I know they've been moving up the ranks. So, you know, we appreciate their contributions. Tanya, she's a nursing student and she definitely supports what we're all about. So uh, she put her student ID down to help us get this uh, organization started. I want to give a shout out to blogger LV Bud King. He's a student at UNLV and uh, he also helped us get this started. And then some other members, some other active members this uh, semester so far, Kim, he came from Korea. He's a foreign exchange student or not foreign exchange, but uh, what do they call it? Uh, study abroad, I guess. Yeah. He's like a study abroad student. And so, yeah, so he came here to the United States to, for college. And so he's new to the United States. And so for this legalization to be happening uh, right where he moved to is a big deal for him. So big salute to Kim, Sam G. You know, he's hit up a couple events. He always makes sure to take some pictures, which we definitely appreciate. So I want to say what's up to Sam G. And uh, Julia from CSN. Uh, we haven't got a chance to interact with her very much, but she's our main contact over at CSN, and uh, we want to give a shout out to her, and we hope to be seeing her in the future. Hopefully, we'll see her in uh, in December or January. But yeah, uh, guys, let's tell them a little bit uh, about what we've been up to so far this semester, hey. some of the things that we've been doing. <laughs> Heather, I know you hit up an event the other day. I did. I did. Um, so... We had an event on campus with um, Dr. Sue Sicily. Um, if you guys aren't familiar, she is kind of groundbreaking in the cannabis industry, um, specifically for veterans suffering from PTSD. So that event was um, brought to us by Reef and the Las Vegas Cannabis Cultivation. So yeah, so that was a powerful collaboration. Uh, Tick Sigerbloom was there. Absolutely. He was the moderator, um, and it was kind of a real intimate experience. They had about um, four members, um, and then Tick, who was moderating, and it was just really intimate, and they did open up at the end for kind of Q&A. So it was nice to see some community members. Um, there were a lot of veterans there, um, and Weed for Warriors was there too, and they showed um, a lot of support for the event, and they asked a lot of great questions, and Sue was kind of able to provide some great feedback for them and let them know, like, cannabis is definitely um, kind of the way that it's 
working, I guess, in terms of alleviating some of the pharmaceuticals, because cannabis helps alleviate a lot of um, symptoms that these patients what type of experience. Questions? What were they asking? Um, kind of more along the lines of le legalities. So, um, it has taken her seven years to get the FDA to actually approve clinical studies for cannabis. So, seven years of her being like pushed back, no, 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 no. So, they were just curious where is it sitting in the standings of the studies and um, also why and then they were kind of just like attacking not really the industry here but just prices here like mm -hmm. this is cannabis for veterans why is it so expensive when they know they're on fixed incomes are there going to be more programs that are going to be coming like compassion programs yeah. like are people going to donate any type of cannabis for veterans just they were just really asking questions now insurance. they're thinking about donating the uh, uh, cannabis for veterans no, 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 no. Like, that was questions that they were asking, oh. like, compassionate what, programs. What, what was the answer? Well, they were just kind of <laughs> geared it more toward, like, the Reef representative, and he was just looking into it, like, yo, that sounds really great. Maybe we could collaborate type of thing. Maybe not. It depends on the laws and how that all plays out. You know what I mean? Of course. Yeah. Of course, it's about license, getting licenses. <laughs> but yeah, so there's a lot of, I think there's some legal legal stipulations as far yeah. as giving stuff out for free, but yeah, especially maybe... Especially here in Nevada with like all the regulations that are so stringent. Yeah, so, no, that was powerful to have Sue Sisley, uh, like Heather said, she's a renowned psychologist. She was on our campus talking about this stuff. Now, for our listeners that don't... Um, uh, live in Nevada. Tick Sigerbloom mm -hmm. is a legislator here. He's now running for a different political position. I can't remember what uh, what position he's running for, but he was he's a legislator, and he was one of the major. He wrote up the stuff to get how it is now with the cannabis. He Absolutely. wrote up that stuff, the bill or whatever, and all that stuff. And gotcha. he's been working on this from day one. So he's very important. Uh, cannabis supporting politician here in Nevada and so he was the moderator for the event so we did oh and this is the other thing this is why I was even going on about that <laughs> much because there's a strain called Seeger Bloom Haze right yes yeah, Seeger Bloom Haze there's a strain named after him called Seeger Bloom Haze but yeah anyhow uh, moving on yeah uh, the uh, the Nevada Cannabis News Hour Okay, it's a about it's basically a weekly podcast. Comes out pretty much every week, and um, it's put on by WeCan702.org, which is a the largest cannabis nonprofit organization in Nevada. And so they have this show called uh, the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. Now, last month in October, they invited me on there to talk about UNLV Rebels Can, and so. They are, you can see the show on YouTube under Worldwide Digital Broadcasting because that's who broadcasts their show. Worldwide Digital Broadcasting, WWDB. And, um, and just look up the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. Or you can look on our Facebook page because we put it, UNLV Rebels Camp Facebook page because we put it on our timeline. And soon it will be on our webpage on redefinecannabis.com. But anyhow, uh, there is a possibility that I'll be going back on that show later this month. As you know, a reoccurring correspondent for the college campus. So that was a big deal for us. Um, and then we had that meeting with John Hudak. Uh, you know, we got a chance to talk to him. You know, um, there was a lot of things to say with them. Yeah, yeah, he There's had a, a lot of sayings and there was a lot of uh, knowledgeable things to talk about. Yeah, he had a lot of questions for us. We got to ask him questions, and he also asked us questions. Kind and of. also, we had the president of the S. Uh, no, actually, the president of CSUN. No, no, no. He's senator, CSUN senator. He's yeah. CSUN senator. Yeah, CSUN senator. CSUN is the student government at UNLV. CSUN is the UNLV student government. Tory. Yeah, Tory our, our homeboy Tory. Yay. He is. He is. Uh, he's Shout a senator. He just got elected. Yeah, and if you look at his on YouTube, see some put out these videos of all the people, one minute video right. for all the candidates. If you guys watch this video, he mentioned his interest in cannabis finance in the future and being okay. cannabis consultant and stuff in his election video. So that was like big, that was big news. That's probably the first time that's ever been done 
in Nevada student body history, a, a candidate runs with cannabis as part of their platform. And get elected. That is, that is the, that's a first. And also that's John Hudak is having his class in February, right? Yeah, well, so John Hudak wants to, he had a class in 2016 at UNLV. Right, it was called, class, by yeah, the way. It was called, uh, 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 well, John Hudak is the author of the book, Marijuana, A Short Story which is the book that we used for the class i took the class it was last october it was a uh, a graduate level class but it was a one credit course it was also open to undergrads and people in the community um and the class was called uh, marijuana policy in the united states in 2016 and beyond you know and so it was uh we had two days of in class long in class sessions and then on saturday that was thursday and friday and then on saturday we went to um silver sage wellness cultivation and then we went to silver sage wellness dispensary on charleston here in las vegas and uh so during that meeting when we met with john hudak we talked about what's the possibility of bringing the class back he said he'd love to bring the class back if hey. it, you know we got if it, the student interest so there is there is work to be done because last time we, there was not that many students that signed up and uh, it was a policy course so the students that signed up for were from um policy degree or whatever and so a uh, public policy degree and so um so we're it's going to be on to us to kind of rally some student supports get some students to commit to signing up in advance and stuff but i do think in the fall 2018 we should be having this class again absolutely but i would love for it to be in spring 2018 <laughs> because it was an intensive course it was only three days so maybe this is something that they could push to the to the spring right. semester because it's not like a whole entire semester right so this could be something that they add and include in the spring but regardless in 2018 we got to have this class again yeah, absolutely right. Absolutely. Uh, for the questions for the students that want to attend this uh, marijuana class, it's like it's more than just smoking weed. It's like what what are, what are the teachings in this class? Okay, so I'm glad you asked me that because I got the book right here. So basically, it's not for or against. It doesn't support or oppose cannabis, but it goes over a lot of the the legalization process from when, how it began in California and how it first started bubbling and how medical started taking over and then how people in Denver went recreational in Colorado. And so it really gives a, a history of that. But at the same time, there's other parts where it talks about how it can help you here and there and you know, other little segments. But a lot of it was about the history and where we're at today, how we got here, where we're going to in the future. And basically one of the things that it might talk about is like who are, are the how are these um initiatives getting funded because like let's say in nevada we had yes on two there's a lot of people working on that campaign or where was the money coming from to finance that campaign you know and the the, the people well i don't think the nevada citizens i don't think they were like putting up all their money out of their pocket to pay people that were doing significant work like for me i was uh spending you know, many hours every week on this campaign, Same. you know, and um, rallying certain students and going to all kind of meetings. I had hours and hours of, of uh, conference meetings on the phone every week. And, you know, and, and I'm a graduate student. So I have to make sure that I get paid for my time. So I was getting paid to do all that. And so the money that paid me to do that, where did that come from? And that came from this organization well where did they get the money well this other people that wanted to see marijuana be legalized in nevada were able to people, right? yeah make sure you know things were going down like that well i was working with sscp right. you know last year i was working with sscp i was contracted by them to uh be the nevada campus coordinator and rally the students to vote because we got tens of thousands of students here in Nevada. I estimate nearly 100,000 by the time you add up all the schools, or even though some of them are actually Nevada residents and they couldn't vote and so a lot of them live out of state because they are online students and stuff like that. But that's just one example of what we would talk about in the class about where these larger finances are coming from to, on this agenda to legalize cannabis and stuff like that which was something that was kind of new to me because I never really thought about it in that way. So, 
Uh, that's just one example, you know. And then, of course, when we did the cultivation, we learned all about the growing and stuff. At the dispensary, we're learning all about that kind of stuff, asking all kind of questions and stuff like that, you know. So hopefully we get this class back again in 2018. Um, so how many no bodies do we need for like this to become a thing? All right, like, so, so last time we had the class, there were five students there. That's not enough. <laughs> yeah, five students no, from UNLV and then five people from the community. Okay. I want to give a shout out to Blissful Vets. Chris from Blissful Vets, yeah. she was there. Uh, and also K and H, Mari, Maritza, uh, Maritza. She brought two of her squad. Two of her team was on deck. You know, um, so that was like uh, four other community people. You know, I guess I counted myself as community. So I was five, <laughs> and then there was five students. Okay. You know, so there was ten. But the point is, we're gonna need at least fifteen to thirty. I'm thinking. All right. You know, when we when we had the sign up sheet. We got about 70 people to sign up, or let's just say we got 60 people to sign up. You know, 50 of them uh, said they would be interested in taking the class. and Or not, not 50, 50%. 50% of them said they'd be interested. Or well, all of them said they'd be interested in taking the class. Yeah. But all of them said they'd be interested in taking the class out of the 60. But let's say um, that only 50% of them are serious. Right. So that would be 30. And then only 50% of them actually will. Right. That's 15. Yeah. You know? Well, now, we had more than 60 people on the sign-up sheet, but I just uh, did the numbers for the math thing and the 50% thing. So, anyhow, um, I'm thinking we need 15 to 30. However, John Hudak introduced us to the, our contact on campus okay. who will give us these details. And that's one of the things that Arafat and I were speaking about on the phone. I believe the other day is that we need to go to this guy's office and have, over the winter break and have a meeting with him and let him let so he can let us know exactly what we need to get this class back because I know it's going to take a letter yeah. from the student organization and he mentioned something about a letter that's showing that we're interested and because there's another student organization on campus that's also interested and get our members to write letters maybe have a few people commit that they will want to take this and basically survey our email list and see who will all be interested in by the way this is 15 to 30 students minimum class by the way this is like three weeks right well the one that was in october 2016 was three days oh. now now wow. again it was an intensive very one short. yeah inti very short. intensive short. one credit yeah. class now this is the thing <laughs> john hudak travels around the world non-stop Right. Okay. Right, he's a busy so, man. So he probably won't, won't be in Vegas for a semester, and eventually there's going to be a semester long course. Eventually, this but for the time be. being, we could work something out with instead of three days, maybe it'll be a week long, or maybe it'll be a two week course because it won't it won't be a semester course, but they have the ability to, you know, expand it, especially if there's enough student interest. You know what I mean? If we show up with 30 students, it's more likely that they'll increase it to a week or two weeks. You know. Right. Um, so this is this is definitely a conversation that's going to be ongoing. How about you guys? What do you guys think about this one on the class? I you think guys are like, students, so yeah. I just want to know from the students' perspective that what, what because we never attended the, a marijuana class ever in our life, yeah. and now it's 2017. We did it's like recreational. Finally, you know, it's been banned forever since 1916. So. Hooray, <laughs> no more weed propaganda. It's like, we have to really, you know, really teach the lessons of weed. So what do you guys think about I think it was a good idea that it was brought on campus just to like, you know, also increase awareness throughout school and open it up to our students. So I think that it would be a good idea for John Hudak to come back and teach it again. I would definitely be enrolled in it this time. Mm -hmm. What about you, Heather? Yeah, I'm just gonna piggyback off Jamie. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like the class being on campus is definitely a strong, strong boisterous opinion of what students want mm -hmm. ongoing like we need to stay progressive i feel like especially with cannabis because right outside of campus we have the strip that's the industry right there that's the cannabis scene right there and right. if we're going to be trained for success we got to have classes on campus that are going to give us the tools to be successful exactly so sure. all about it so john huda come back man <laughs> now now as far as the now as far as the on campus part 
The class was actually hosted at the historical Fifth Street School. Oh, okay. So we weren't on campus then. Hopefully this next one will actually be on campus. That'd be legit, Absolutely. yeah. Mm-hmm. And actually, we need more marijuana classes well, because we're relying on one guy, well, you know. Right. We need more the classes. Class class class. Class. We need right. more right. marijuana right. teachers. I guess we are the future. I yes. mean, you know, like. We are the damn future. Absolutely. Yeah. I know there's another <laughs> college in the no nation. No stoners, like, no bullshit. Like, we need, like, real action students that are legit that wants to actually put in the work take notes real talk and actually get, take exams to actually pass out as doctors in this industries we need people legitimately to have degrees in marijuana like let's actually make this establish i mean come on isn't it weird that a lot of the you go to the doctors for prescriptions for pills like you got if i go to the doctor right now and say hey i'm having this and this problem this such and such and all of a sudden they'll give me a freaking piece of paper that you can scribble out scribble the Bro, fuck that. Oh, I can say, say fuck, right? Yeah. Oh, my fuck, my fuck. I thought I, was on, I thought I was on the radio station yeah, right. for a second. Yeah. <laughs> because at the radio station, you can't say it. But anyway, they scribble the fuck out of those no, doctor's notes and you can't mm. read them. Exactly. Like, exactly. Like, you can't even read the fucking X. Yeah. <laughs> they scribble the shit out of it. Right. And then that, when they send it out to the pharmacy, and then they actually read the emails, they don't even read the freaking prescription. That was just a no, that was like a bathroom pass basically. <laughs> and so when you go there, because now they're having drive throughs on the dispensary. So so yo new woo, new woo dispensary started their drive through. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah, so, but, I mean you go to C V S and then you get a fucking drive through to get your fucking pills. So why you can't get a you know a drive through of getting your uh, your prescription on the right medicine? I think we need people more people that are serious with chronic pain to switch over to cannabis. That that need medicinal. Uh, I mean, uh, what is it? A medical card? Yeah. Yeah. We need people, people, more people with medical cards with real pain and have real doctors to actually help these people to actually find out the real proper strains that they be, they're searching for for that legit pain. Because there's a lot of ways to actually get high. It's not. Uh, it's not the aspect of having fun to get high. I mean, that's a hippie thing. I mean, if you're a hippie, straight up. Like, you're straight up because I love mushrooms and I love acid and I love my hippie stuff. But in cannabis, it does have its medicinal side as well. So, so does shrooms. I will defend that. <laughs> there, there, hey, in the near future, I think in 2015, I think my children or like my grandchildren or whatever is going to fight for shrooms because I think that's going to be another mind blowing experience. <laughs> then, ah, yeah. free the shrooms. <laughs> yes, yes. So, um, yeah, hopefully we get that class back, guys. That, yeah. That'll that be amazing. Yeah. And, Cause I'm sorry not to like yeah, slide in, but I was just gonna say there's only one other uh, college in the nation offering any type of uh, cannabis uh, education, and that's the University of Michigan. However, you can get your degree in cannabis, but you're not able to actually work with the plant. Yeah, so, you're working with other plants like to basil learn. And yeah, other oh, other learn herbs. how that's plants crazy. work. Yeah, yeah. Because, and they're basically re- using that program to refine it refining that course until they're finally able to actually use the real thing so that way they're going through the process of what it'll be like to grow and stuff like that at least that's how i understand it yeah but i want to encourage everybody to do this if they don't have a cannabis class at your college i want you to consider working with your professor to do an independent study class focused on cannabis because before i took the cannabis class before I took the cannabis class in October 2016 at UNLV, I had taken several other independent study courses in my undergrad years where I worked one-on-one with my professors to do cannabis-themed projects for that. So uh, don't give up if there's no cannabis class at your school. Go the independent study route. They got courses for that. And a lot of schools, you can take more than one independent study class. So I took like many cannabis classes. But it was one on one with a professor <laughs> and it wasn't a uh, curriculum based and all this stuff. So, yeah, and now speaking of cannabis and education, we got the Bud Tender Fight Club. We did go to the Bud Tender Fight Club in October and we had uh, multiple students there. And then we're going to the one in November on November 19th. Um, Bud Tender Fight Club is an educational workshop that's been taking place every month here in Las Vegas and it just gets people prepared to work in the industry. 
We even were able to collaborate with them to get a student discount code. Anybody that types in UNLV, when they sign up on Eventbrite, they get 20% off. And they also collaborated with us on those flyers. I don't know if you guys remember those dope flyers that yeah, we got. We you know what I'm saying? It's got our flyer on one side, Bud Tender Fight Club flyer on the other side. And we've been passing them out around campus. And uh, so that's, that's good, you know. Um, we also did that lab tour. You guys remember? Shout out DB Labs. DB Labs. Yes. You know, yes. DB Labs. You know, <laughs> Susan gave us a tour. Yes. Shout out to Curtis. You know, uh, we went on that DB Labs tour and um, I had a good time. Heather and I, we waited outside for a while for the rest of the people to come. We didn't. No. We didn't. No. We were out there, man. Hey, we this was that one girl that actually showed up, but she never showed up ever again. That one, one girl. She, she was there for one touch, right? Oh, that's... Yeah, she came back. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She came back. She came back. She's doing some stuff. Actually, she is? Yeah, What's her yeah. name? What's her name? Well, yeah, I don't she really she shall her. not be named. <laughs> because she never showed up to the meetings. Well, the, well, you just recently missed that one, and boom, she was, she was there. there. She, she was, was there. there. Yeah, yeah, and she's yeah. helping with hey. uh, with the hike. Edit that, that out. We got to help with the hike, but she's no. never said. You guys, you guys actually came early. They're yeah, not early. You guys came on time. I guess we were late. <laughs> you know. I don't want to say it, but I'm gonna say it. Stoner Pops, we were like on time ish. You know yeah, I mean? and they were inside. No, we were inside for so long. You guys were outside, we were and outside. I see Duvall in a blue shirt. And I was like, yo, is, is that, is that, and that <laughs> opened up the door for a second? Oh, I was like, yo, it's like already past time. <laughs> yo, we were just trying to be diligent, awaiting our fellow members outside just so we could like And Kim was on his way. Kim was Squad. on his way. And uh, yeah, we're gonna all come in together. I thought we were gonna be in the parking lot. Me too. A little bit late. Me too. Yeah, but we really didn't <laughs> We got sat there like the hitchhikers. Like, I was like, what the hell? I, didn't, I was waiting on y'all, man. I had just got off a long hike. I had just got off a real long hike. Oh, but yeah, so at the lab tour, uh, we got a tour. We got to check out all the equipment. Yes. You know, multi-million dollar equipment. Some of the uh, machines cost $5,000 a piece. Or $500,000. $500,000 a piece or more. And uh, they told us everything that the equipment does. Absolutely. And we got to meet the scientists, the owners of the lab, and uh, take some pictures. Absolutely. You know, we got some swag, I think. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? they we got some it swag. Up. Yo, and it was really nice because, you know, Nevada, we have some of the most stringent testing policies. So to, like, be able to go to the lab and see, like, yo, this is where we find out when we go to the dispensary how much TCA, THC, THCA, CBD, CBN, terpenes. It comes from that, their lab and those results and what they do there. So shout out, thank you as a patient. Like, your, your testing helps me when I'm going to go make my med choices. So, TV, thanks. And one of the big things that we learned is the difference between a lab label and a lab report. Yeah. A lab label is on your package, on your medicine that you purchase in a small. A lab report is a full page or more yes. that they have to print up or get from the back. You, you can always requ request a lab report. The lab label is only a truncated or a shortened version of the lab report yeah so the lab label is small time always ask for the lab report it might take 10 or 15 extra minutes if you got the time yeah. ask for the lab report because it gives you a very very detailed profile of the terpenes and cannabinoids and all that stuff yes. so um and this these lab tours are something that we want to do every month we hopefully we're going to have this be a thing that we go to different labs every month and uh and if students are interested like, let us know, reach out, you guys could join the tours, yeah? Yeah, like, yeah, students? any students, especially Kim and Bio students, yeah. we need you guys on the tour. Any Anybody you know. can join in? Like, if you, or do you have to register, uh, register through uh, UNLV? No, you gotta, to basically you gotta sign up to our, our membership list. Yeah. So yeah. anybody in the membership? Yeah, mm -hmm. go on the tours. No, I mean, you know, take the class with John Cooper. Oh, anybody, no, any student can do that, anybody, any student. Or anybody can do it? Probably, last time it was open to the community, so that meant anybody could do it. Sure. But I don't know, if we get 30 students in there, then they might just make it for students only. Yeah, last time you said there was only like, what, like five people? Five students, ten. Five students, five community. Ten? Yeah. That's not a lot. Yeah. That's why we gotta raise awareness. Yeah. So why not do it? Everybody 
So we gotta we gotta talk to them, but those are meetings that we gotta have. Fifteen, right? Mm-hmm. Well, half and half. Well, we want to get thirty students, fifteen to thirty students, but we could do that. That's just conversations that we're gonna have with that guy when we go meet with him. Because from the get go, I don't think we can actually just get thirty students. Well, we got we got our emailing list. I think out of our emailing list, we can get ten or fifteen from our emailing list, and then I think if we put out a flyer. And we promote for a couple of weeks. I think we can get like ten more. So, but yeah, um, moving. if not, it would be a very big disappointment. So please sign up. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. So. Um, so we were also mentioned in the August issue of Vegas Cannabis Magazine in the UNLV Rebels Reefer Report, and our flyer appeared in the October and November issue of Vegas Cannabis Music Magazine. So it's we, it's nice how we've been trying to get our na- our names out there. And yeah. It's building up. But. Um, I think wait. Was it you that said you saw the thing in yeah. in the magazine? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, Heather. Uh, yeah, she so saw. It works. <laughs> yeah, she saw the flyer in the magazine. Yeah, because I was a transfer student to UNLV, and my previous campus that I was on, which was Nevada State College, <laughs> I was really big into cannabis, and I wanted to be like, hey, is there an organization on campus? And they're like, yeah, there's one, but it's inactive. The president switched to UNLV. And I was like, oh, bummer, and unbeknownst, life happens, and a year later, I'm a transfer student, and I see, dude, UNLV does have a cannabis club on campus, yeah. like, how did I not know? Mm-hmm. So, without it being in the Vegas Cannabis Magazine, I would have known, so, nice. shout out. When did you enroll in, uh, when did you enroll in uh, UNLV? Mm, I think last spring-ish? What is this now? The fall. Fall? Yeah. 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 So 2017 in general? No, 2016. Thank you. Oh, shit. Yeah. A little while then. A little bit, yeah. That's when nice. I started my degree program as well. Yeah? That's my own. Yeah. So it's dope nice. that we're all in this, like, club together now. Yeah. You too? No, I just transferred this semester, so hey, yeah, oh. I'm a newbie in here. Welcome. Yeah, Welcome. It's, been, it's been cool. Yeah, I've been enjoying it Welcome a lot. Welcome to UNLV. Right? Yeah, right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, cool. So um, the last two things on this, uh, what we've been up to in the past is uh, one, uh, there was an uh, article about me in the uh, student newspaper, the That's UNLV right, yeah. Scarlet and Gray Free Press. They mentioned the Rebels Can. I think they called it the Rebels Cannabis Network. They yeah, might have forgot the awareness part, but <laughs> it's all good. Um, so anyhow, uh, but we want to uh, get an article about the organization in the future. You know, because that organization spoke more about my running and my past than it did about the student organization. So hopefully in the future, well, next semester in 2018, we're going to have an article all about Rebels Can and everything that we're up to, like this podcast yeah. and everything else. And also we have a weekly newsletter that we have that comes out every week uh, and that we send out to our mailing list. And if you want to get on that weekly newsletter, here's how you can do it. Just send an email to UNLVRebelsCan.com. UNLVRebelsCan.com. Oh, wait, no, no. Of course, you don't send an email there. Just <laughs> <laughs> send an email to unlvrebelscan at gmail.com. Yeah. Unlvrebelscan at gmail.com. Or you can go on our Facebook page and you can look on our timeline for the newsletter, click on it. And at the top left-hand corner of the newsletter, there's a button that says subscribe, and you can subscribe to our newsletter. And that way, no matter who you are, if you're a member or not, if you're a student or not, you can be up to speed on everything that we're doing and everything that we have coming up because we offer a lot of opportunities that even if you aren't a student, maybe you're thinking about becoming a student or maybe you're just a community member that you can uh, take advantage of, like if we promote a job fair or something like that. So, um, now for the Speaking new- of job fairs, do we talk about do I have to talk about my Canada? If you what want to, man. Be? It's up to you, man. It's a, it was a terrible experience. Oh my god. I mean, you did tell me that I could talk about a bad experience, right? <laughs> hey, Heather, I think you could back me up, right? <laughs> Yo, you ain't lowballing me in this, baby. Bro. Just get out of the baby. So, yeah, well, Sam was out there and, uh, you know. You're exposing. 
You know, he took a picture <laughs> out the job fair. I wanted to leave. Sam. Uh, Sam G. I don't know. Um, you haven't met him yet. I haven't met him. I haven't met him yet either. You guys met him, huh? Mm-hmm. You, yeah, I introduced him to the group. He's definitely one who um, advocates for his brother. Even that guy that was like sending out the little uh, stickers? That guy? Stickers. What happened to him? Oh no no no! Oh that's, no, that's, that's the environmental man. Uh-huh. I know you're talking about him with the water bottle sticker. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking LB about. Bud King. That's LB Bud King, and uh, he yeah he came to that meeting right quick, gave us some stickers. That's his real name. Well, that's his blogger name. Okay, he's, he's, I was yeah, like, yeah. okay, LV Bud King. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he's a blogger for RedefineCannabis.com, okay. uh, and he's also a student. You know, shout out for the water environmental conservation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, no, but as far as uh, now, in this next, in the next segment of the show, now in the future we might have commercial breaks breaking up these segments. <laughs> but right now on this episode, there's no commercial, so we're gonna get roll straight on through. Unless somebody needs to use the restroom or something. Or... Nah. All right, so it's going to be kind of basically our future plans and what we got coming up, just kind of loosely going over some of our future stuff. Now, anybody could chime in on any of these things, uh, but I know one of the I'm things saying, that... You got water? Yeah. <laughs> some water. Hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, I have a snack some Jamie's. Oh, oh, I know. Oh, yeah. It's all good. I think everybody needs water. <laughs> I'm good. I got some. I got some. Yeah. Give me some aqua. Aqua is Vita, everybody. <laughs> Water is yes. nice. Right, seventy percent of our body is water. It's so water. please smoke weed and drink a lot. And drink your water. Smoke a lot, a lot of weed. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, is this the alkaline water? No, no. Uh, I, I know he's blessing us with alkaline water. All right, get this body yeah, back to the alkaline. You know what I'm saying? Disease will not flourish. All right. Gotta gotta pH balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But um, I got more water in the fridge too. I I just gave you guys some for now. I just put this. I don't want to block the mic, so. Just, right. okay. So um yeah. So one of the things that we want, I wanted to say this off the top. One of our goals, mm-hmm. four hundred and twenty by January first. Yeah. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We need to have four hundred and twenty followers. Four hundred and twenty likes. Period. Go out there. And Hands follow down. Us. Yes. No questions asked. Follow us, Facebook, give us the like, yep. Instagram, anything that you like, anything you, if you heard anything you like, go ahead and give us a follow and keep updated with all the things that we're doing. Yes. Yeah, so please get up with us on social media because we got to have that going down. And share it too. Sharing caring. Spread the yep. awareness. <laughs> yep. Um, also, uh, one of the things that we're trying to do, I know you just said you went to Nevada State College. Yeah. Nevada State College is the home of the first Cannabis Awareness Network, the Scorpions Can, that took place over there in, mm-hmm. like, what, 2015, 2016 mm-hmm. academic school year. And so we're trying to revive that. It's dormant. We're trying to revive that organization, the Scorpions Can. We're trying to work with Julia to get the Coyotes Can going at hey, uh, CSN. Hey. Coyotes Can. And we, Are you like that? You did? Mm-hmm. Are you from Las Vegas? No. Oh, well, where did you transfer from? Tra- those schools. Oh, from CSN to UNLV? No. CSN to Nevada State, because I was a nursing major. I see. And then I was I would have stayed at Nevada State, but they don't have a social work program. Mm-hmm. So when I switched my major, that made me have to switch institutions. So my new home is UNLV. Nice. <laughs> nice. I know. Yeah, so... um. Hopefully we get student or if you have any contacts from those other campuses, let us know because we want to start cannabis awareness networks there. Even up in Reno at UNR, hey. the uh, Wolfpack Can, the Wolfpack Cannabis Awareness Network, and we're going beyond just the state of Nevada. We even want to start a chapter. Hopefully in 2018, fall 2018, or sometime in 2018, we'll start our first cannabis awareness network chapter in another state. Okay, and we're going to be taking this over state by state here. That's the plan. Every state is going to have a cannabis awareness network. So first, we got to start with one other state. You know, maybe Arizona, Denver. California. Yeah. 
Colorado. Yeah. 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 I think they already started. I mean, they already been in this recreational since right. like 2011, now, 2012, yeah. right? Yo, yeah. November 2012, they actually really? started that. Yeah, Washington. That's a long time ago. Yeah, wow. and Washington, Washington yeah. Colorado. So why not actually go to those states? Because they already got shit popping. I already know the students like us already have that kind of right. mentality. We're just upcoming. Yeah, we're just upcoming, and you know, uh, even though it's been like, what, five years? Five years, yeah. Yeah, it's been five years, so within that gap, I think they already, like, got something going. Like, I know in Colorado, they have, like, some type of, like, a bar, but in real talk, they're, like, passing around bombs, and everybody getting fucked up, and the, the, the emission fee is, like, really high. But people just go in there and just, like, drinking, like, it's beer, but it's bombs. People are passing jo- uh, joints, blunts, wherever they can just get fucked up. So, you know what? I mean, I, since they have that kind of mentality, why not go to those uh, universities? Yeah, we got to go talk to some, some students up in Colorado. So, I'll be up in Colorado for the 420 games if any of you guys want to come up. It's going to be over the summer. So, if you guys want to come up to Colorado with me. Oh, no, I'll be up there in April for the Colorado International Cannabis and Hemp Film Festival. Oh. Yeah, April, the week of 420. So if anybody wants to come up with me then, we can collaborate with students. We can tell them to meet us at the film festival, the Colorado Cannabis, Colorado International Cannabis and Hemp Film Festival. You can find it using hashtag C-I-C-H-F-F. So, yeah, that's a great idea. And when I was in Colorado, I was I fell victim to fake news. I don't know if you guys seen that thing that was on uh, social media about the first marijuana McDonald's that you could smoke marijuana in. They had those little things <laughs> over there. No way, I didn't. Yeah, it was like on Facebook, and it lo- made it look like a real news story. So the when onion, I got to, right? it's something like that. Yeah. So yeah, when I got to Denver, I was like, oh, I was like, where is these McDonald's at? Where are these? You McDonald's? were all looking for it. So yeah, oh that's. My God. Yeah, the whole talk about like aliens just came into Las Vegas and just just took over the planet. Like they will just what make us. Heck? Yeah, just look it up. Onion.com or something. All the like onion. Hey. 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 They just really want to grab your attention. I see. Now some other stuff that's coming up. Dr. Sanjay Gupta. Yo. I don't know if you he's heard huge. him. I don't know if you ever heard of him before. Yeah, but he should have. have. He's he coming have. to our campus next week. Mm-hmm. In like two days, actually. Mm-hmm. Two or three days. Yeah. Yeah. Tuesday. So. So I know you got a mission. You're gonna go what fo- detail photojournalism or your sense? Yes, sir. I mean, we need to get a camera and just start taking real, taking capture pictures, in real life. Um, I guess like action, live actions. You know, g- grasping him talking and making this like important. You know, this is more than just marijuana. This is like we having a real doctor from CNN coming all the way. You know, busy right? doctor. You know. Like, you see him on television. Sanjay Gupta is, like, one of the known journalists from CNN. So, you know what? Like, it's, it's time to actually, like, grasp the moment by actually taking another picture since picture takes, like, a million, you know, says a thousand words already. So, yeah. let's actually make this moment happen. Hell uh, yeah. So, hopefully you get that. We get to check him out on the 14th at UNLV. It's going down. Um, also, later that week, we're supposed to meet up with DJ from Ace Analytics. Right. He's going to be on campus talking to the Kim department. And uh, we're going to, you know, crash the party, you know, see what's up, uh, listen to the lecture and stuff like that. And uh, Ace Analytics is a marijuana testing laboratory here in Las Vegas. And DJ is one of the scientists that works there. And so uh, on Friday, we should get a chance to talk with him. Yeah. So that would be cool. You know um, where about on campus he's going to be at? I just know it's the Kim department. Kim department. Yeah, that's all I know. But no, we'll find out more. And uh, we're going to be posting it on our Facebook and Twitter uh, on Friday morning. Sounds good. Um, also, uh, elections. we got elections coming up for all the different positions. We're going to be sending out a thing about that in our next newsletter. I think on the, uh, the ninth newsletter. Uh, going out next week is going to have some details about nominations, etc. So that'll be cool. We're going to get some, you know, get everybody official in their leadership roles. And uh, it's going down. Now, uh, January. Uh, oh, yeah, we already said that the 420 on everywhere. 
and some of our other future things the cannabis uh, racks we want to get a cannabis rack magazine rack in the student what union to that, man? That, that, oh, yeah. we're still I on that been, huh? we're still on that man yeah, we give up but see this is the okay. thing now we got now this is the thing you are contact at freedom leaf so you're supposed to get freedom leaf magazines for us we got another contact uh, i have a shit ton if you guys want i'll keep Yo, yeah, yeah. we got we got another contact or another member that's going to be going to um elevate yeah elevate, elevate. your friend karina. yeah karina she's going to be going to elevate she's going to be picking up a box of elevate every month we got another mm -hmm. person going to vegas cannabis vegas. magazine yeah mm -hmm. i can't remember jasmine yeah jasmine, jasmine right. put a name yeah. to a face right. jasmine. Jasmine. Call her jamie oh you did yeah I did. After, after oh my god oh no way um, yeah uh, yeah, so she's gonna go to Vegas Cannabis Magazine. Then we're gonna find somebody to go to Cincy and somebody to go to Dope. Oh, you know what no, I mean? Okay. So actually, they're not really that known, right? Yeah, they're not. Well, they're newer. They're newer on the scene. Elevate. Oh, they're Vegas. upcoming. Well, this is the thing. They're not necessarily upcoming. They are new in the state, but they already have other publications in other states, so yeah. they already have a larger platform, and they're new to, to the Vegas. state. Now, in the difference, in the flip side, Vegas Cannabis Magazine started in vegas but now they're spreading to the tahoe cannabis to the coastal cannabis to the phoenix cannabis magazine so just like cincy is kind of coming from other places to vegas vegas cannabis is spreading from vegas to other places so so that's real interesting to see um and so yeah so we're going to be having so that's the part where we're at with the magazine racks on campus right now we're collecting all the magazines one box per month from each of these publications and then we're still gonna move forward with trying to get the How rack. How are you advertising those the racks? Like, what kind of rack is it? I mean, we're still figuring this stuff out. We're st with the uh, student with the information desk at the student union. Student union people, we gotta talk to the student union people. That's right. That's how they get the racks in there. Get the racks approved. Yeah. All right. Um, and then one of the other things that we want to do next semester is to print something academically. Yes. I mean, not print some, pr present, present. To present something, present some of our work, you know, by collaborating, you know, mm -hmm. I'm a grad student, I have to do things like that, and that's why it could be beneficial to collaborate with undergrad students on my graduate projects, you know, you guys get some experience doing that, and then we could present it, and stuff like that, so, hopefully in 2018 we can meet that goal, you know what I mean? And so just a few more things left. Oh, that's right. Yo, so SSDP, guys, the annual conference is coming up in March of 2018. Um, SSDP is kind of our sister alliance uh, organization on campus. It's Students for Sensible Drug Policy. So they are kind of more geared toward um, I'd say access and use of all substances, but have sensible legislations about it and sensible use and um, yeah, personal discretion, I guess. Yeah, and just don't lock. Pe also, don't lock people up yeah. that use stuff. If, if they, if maybe they have they use drugs or something that yeah. maybe they shouldn't go to jail for yeah. that. Yeah, that, and stuff I like agree that. with that. So, and the word drugs. So. That organization, yeah. that's uh, a national organization, and they're having the, uh, their international conference. I'm going to say international because I went to the one last year okay. in Oregon, in Portland, Oregon. Stayed at the Red Lion and whatnot. And uh, the thing was, they had so many people there from different countries. Wow. So people came from all over the world to go there. For the conference? For the conference. Yo, don't hate on people who do substances. Check it out. International. Yeah. Conference. So this is gonna be in Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. Early March. Don't share needles. We're trying to get several of our members. We're trying to get several of our members uh, to this conference. I know I'm gonna be there, and I already talked to the UNLV SSTP students. I know they wouldn't miss this for the world, and so uh, I look forward to it. That's coming up, and uh, yeah. Well, we also have our third official meeting, December 13th, at Chiba Hut. Yep, and that's Rebels Camp Cheetah Hut. Um, 
Um, meet and greet also after at the UNLV Student Involvement Fair, January 2018. So yep, yeah, you could catch us there. And also, we do have a 10% off student discount at Chiba Hut. So yes. if you want to grab a bite, bring your student ID, and you could save a little money. Yes, yep. 10%. Come on, come mm-hmm. see. Bring us. your student money. <laughs> bring your student ID. And There's your no money. weed in it. <laughs> <laughs> sound dank, yeah. but you gotta be careful. There is no THC or yeah. CBD in it. Yeah, he's absolutely right. No, let's Sorry. let's go ahead. And, we want people to know this stuff because they don't know. That's, so we, that's a good point that you bring yeah. up. This is not infused. This food is not medicated. All the sandwiches have titles of different uh, strains. Yeah. Like, for instance, I had the chicken and ranch. That was called the White Widow. Okay. And they had, they, had, they, had other, they had other sandwiches with these names. Now, there's cannabis all over the, the leaves and artwork all over the place. They have cannabis literature and magazines all over the place. They have, like, special sweet munchy type. Uh, Kool-Aid. They have Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid. Now the thing is this, it's in a it's in a shopping plaza with the dispensary, with the smoke shop. So even though it's not a cannabis place, it's kind of like the shopping plaza is kind of building up to be like a, little, a, a little cannabis. Hint, hint, yeah. A little, yeah. yeah. So um yeah, definitely meet us at Chiba Hut December 13th. We're having a meeting. And anybody can come to us, an open meeting, and also in January we'll have that meet and greet that she was talking about. Yeah. Where we're gonna invite everybody from the get involvement fair to the uh, Chiba Hut for just to meet who we are, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, pretty much. Uh-huh. Get um, to know us better. And then, uh, you wanna... Oh, yeah! We're gonna do, um, a little tie-dye party on my pad. So, we're gonna need to have our shirts, and we're gonna kinda just have, like, a kickback, and... Mm-hmm. Chill. Chill, and, and get together, pad. collaborate, and tie-dye some awareness shirts, so we can have our brand and our presence on campus. So. And also, we're gonna have a little food. We might help others or sell our own merchandise, right? Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. gonna be having some swag and some gear coming up. Not just those tie-dye shirts, but you know, some other shirts that we're getting made up. Yeah, we got a lot true. of plans sure. coming up. A bunch of stuff coming up. So stay tuned. You guys are gonna be able to order your shirt, you know, to support the podcast, to support the student organization. We're gonna have t-shirts, we're gonna have hats and all that, you know. And also, of course, with the tie-dye stuff, we're going to have pictures. So stay tuned for the pictures of us in our tie-dye shirts. Yes. You know? Look for us. Um, and All then of the tie-dye. One of the last big things on the list is this. Because we encourage stu- uh, community involvement with our student organization. We encourage people to come from the community, to come to our meetings, to come to the different things that we promote. And so what we're doing is we're creating a spin-off organization, the Las Vegas Cannabis Awareness Network. This is going to be comprised of all the people that want to be involved with the Rebels Can. They're going to be part of Vegas Can, and they are going to be doing their thing as well. You know what I mean? And so one of the first things that we're doing in collaboration with that is the uh, uh, we're going to go on a Mount Scorpion hike on January 3rd. I think right now it's Jan- we got it uh, marked for January 3rd. We're inviting people to the community from the community that want to be involved in this kind of thing to come out meet us some of the members of rebels can and uh and see how they can be involved in stuff like this so it is going to be a very challenging hike it's three miles all together round trip yo but you got it don't be intimidated by that (laughs) from the parking lot to the top from the parking lot to the bottom of the mountain is a mile from the bottom of the mountain to the top of the mountain is half a mile and then you know then you just double that back to the parking lot that's Mm going to be three miles it's going to be very challenging it's going to take several hours to complete and um i hope to see some of you guys out there i know you're going to be busy probably next semester and stuff like that but i hope to see you guys out there and uh we're gonna have a meeting we're gonna have a meeting at the top of the mountain and we're gonna talk about the future and all that good stuff so that's episode one this this concludes episode one uh we want to thank everybody for tuning in anybody who listened to this please share this if you know somebody in college let them know we're gonna you know show them how they can do their thing uh and forward this to anybody in college any college professors they need to hear this too you know so um yeah guys uh we didn't come up with a sign off line that's something we'll be working on in the future what we say when we sign off every episode we don't have that at this point but um basically so for rebels can (laughs) (laughs) 
this is Rebels Can signing off, and we'll catch you on episode two coming out in December. Yo, Happy holidays. Peace and love.